Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Wow. This last 24 hours has been off the rails. Looks like we have a new channel member. Thanks, Eric, for uh, signing up for a channel membership. Much appreciated. Today, we're going to be talking all about phone booths. Now, the Matrix ties into these phone booths, doesn't it? Neo from The Matrix was the neodymium magnet. And he interacted with copper telephone booths, didn't he? And what he did is this enabled him to defy physics. Now, what am I talking about here? Well, if you look at real neodymium magnets and how they interact with copper, they also defy physics. Now, many of you that have followed the channel for some time have seen us do the study on this particular phenomenon. But I'm going to play a couple seconds of this video for you. This silver metallic object here is the neodymium magnet. And this piece over here is a solid copper piece or a disc. Let's play a little bit of this. Now, this is all real time. None of this was slowed up or sped down or sped or sped up or slowed down said that backwards but this is the effect that the neodymium magnet has when it comes in close contact with copper so he pulls the magnet back and it almost seems to defy space and time just like neo did so was the neodymium magnet in the copper clad telephone booth was that trying to tell us something defying time and space that is the question now here are some other images of this magnet and how it interacts with copper look at this zoom this up so you guys can see this remember the bullets that would start to approach neo they would fire these bullets at him and he would just like slowly move out of the way it was like time was stopped well that's exactly what's going on here I mean look at this now they've done some other experiments as well they call these eddying currents and this is what they say is the reason why it acts like this but what if these eddying currents are something different like maybe spirits or demons now here's another experiment they drop this neodymium magnet through this tube and on the outside of it are copper coils well watch what happens They tie the copper coil together, creates a circuit, and it actually slows down as it passes through. Some very strange effects. Now, if they hook a light up to it, it can actually create power. So they're able to create power out of nothing by simply dropping a magnet using gravity and passing it through copper coils. Now, there's some other experiments here, too, where they basically take this thing and they can actually move other objects on top of it. Look at this. This is real time. It looks like a ghost, almost. Now, as we've mentioned in previous shows, Nikola Tesla was obsessed with copper. There's one particular experiment that comes to mind where he had a copper egg on top of some kind of table and it, he was showing the trans-dimensional properties of this egg but it, the same thing appears to happen when you put a magnet next to copper now why are we talking about all this well if you didn't know coins are made with a copper core Every coin except the penny, the penny is only coated with 2% copper, 
but here you see the percentages of the amount of copper in each of the US coins here we have 75 percent copper core and a nickel 91 percent copper core in a dime and 91 percent copper core inside of a quarter so now you're beginning to understand that in fact basically a telephone booth is full of copper coins now here's what else you probably didn't know telephone wire is also made of copper now we're talking about all this now because we're going to get into an exhibit that Abrina Abramovich did in which she puts on display solid copper phone booths so she knows something doesn't she there's something to these copper telephone booths and copper core and all these things and there's an interdimensional time travel aspect as well and what is that well let me check in with you and we'll get into the interdimensional time travel aspect of these phone booths many of you will remember bill and ted's excellent adventure and of course they traveled through time in a phone booth and then of course we had superman and he also traveled through time in a phone booth. What do you mean, Casey? He didn't travel through time. Yes, he did. Remember how fast he would change once he went into the phone booth? Time sped up in the phone booth. What else do we have? Well, remember Doctor Who? He also traveled through time in a phone booth. It was called the TARDIS. Doctor Who. And then there was Get Smart. And he would talk to headquarters through a phone booth. This is all the way back in the 1960s. Now, someone else found this 1970s film. It was directed by Steven Spielberg. And it was called Duel. From 1971, and watch this. Rattlers, as this guy walks and goes into a phone booth, it's basically a snake farm, and you can hear them hissing in the background. Weird place for a telephone booth. Weird place for a telephone booth. Is all this starting to sink in? Phone booth. Weird place for a telephone booth. Now, what else is going on here? Well, Marina Bramovich has just come out with this new exhibit in which she immortalizes the form of the telephone booth. Now I found something at 157 yesterday of all of all times and I didn't find it it was delivered a message delivered from the Holy Spirit is how these things happen and it told me the secret of the telephone booth. Now we've been on this telephone booth for a couple years now but the secret to this was finally revealed and we'll get to that at the end of the show. But this is her exhibit. Now this came out earlier this year. Oxfordshire, I believe. And she herself names it Gates and Portals. Let's read this. Because in here she talks about moving between states of consciousness. And I'm wondering, is, is this how these people talk to demons? Is this how they use divination to see the future? She also mentions a physical and spiritual transition. 
the gate enables the entrance from one world to another and conditions the body to be receptive to the portal whereas the portal offers visitors the possibility of a higher state of consciousness. Visitors are not silent witnesses. They are part of the show and they participate in the show. Their experience with the object is the artwork itself. Without the experience, the objects are empty. And my question is, but are they really empty? Now, what is so special about this shape? Well, I decided to do a little research on that and find out what is going on with the phone booth shape. And this is amazing. This article came out on July 23rd, 1959. It's called, How Many in a Phone Booth? And according to this article, the world record for how many people could fit into a phone booth is 33. 33 fraternity brothers from Oklahoma State University from Lambda Chi Alpha fit into a phone booth in front of 1,500 witnesses. Now that in itself suggests some kind of occult meaning to the phone booth. But look at this. They actually talk about the standard dimensions for the phone booth because that's where I believe that I should start my search. I was like, okay, there's something about the phone booth. Let's look at the dimensions of the phone booth. So this article tells us, it says that some phone booths are three feet by three feet by seven feet. But other phone booths are a little bit smaller. They're 32 inches, which is 2.7 feet by 2.7 feet by 7 feet. Are you ready for this? 2.7, 2.7, and 7. So there's two twos and three sevens. Two, three, seven. The beast. Now, there weren't too many other clues. So, when we don't have a lot of clues, we are left to speculate, right, about the deeper occult meanings behind the telephone booth. And that's when what I'm going to tell you next was revealed to me. The booth represents transformation. And it represents entering into and changing from one thing to another or going from one place to another. And if you think about this, this isn't too far of a stretch because what happens when you get into a phone booth? You call someone far away, right? And so as I was sitting yesterday, a particular shape came to mind. When I was considering the shape of a phone booth. And that shape was the Twin Towers. Yes, each Twin Tower is a phone booth. And I'm going to prove it to you mathematically right now. Now here were the dimensions of the towers. 208 feet by 208 feet. Apologies for that it's a little bit blurry. But this is the best image I could find on short notice. And the height of it was 1,368 feet. Now, if you're a math person, you're going to want to get out your pencil and paper as we go through this, because I'm not going to type it on the screen because I can't don't have the ability to do that right now. I rounded the 2.6 up to 2.7 because it's 2.666, so that's 2.7, right? So in order to find the ratio, in other words, we're comparing a phone booth to the tower, right? Guess what number you divide 208 by 
to come up with a 2.7 feet ratio. Guess what number you divide 208 by to come up with the 2.7 foot telephone booth ratio. Let's go into the chat and see who gets it first. Someone's going to get it. Let's take a look at who gets it first. Let me ask the question again. What number do you divide 208 by to get the 2.7 foot ratio of a telephone booth? In other words, we're making a small telephone booth out of a big telephone booth. I know there's some math people in here. Yeah, truth, Terry, truth is close. It's a double digit number, but it's 77. David Bruce nailed it. It is 77. And whose number is 77? It's Trump. Now, let's keep going with this because now that we know the divisor, I guess they call it, the number that you divide two by 208 by to turn it into a telephone booth is 77. We can now apply that to this height, right? We can also divide 1,368 by 77. And guess what we come up with when we do that? 1776. Which is the height of the new Freedom Tower. So now we have ourselves a mathematical proof. Even though it's 17 feet tall, it would be a 17 foot tall phone booth. A really tall phone booth. More than twice the height of a standard telephone booth. When we apply these mathematics, we still have the obvious answer staring us in the face. 17.7666 feet tall. 1776. The height of the new tower that would replace this one after it fell. So, the towers were telephone booths. Full of people. Full of people. Wow. And the towers brought us through a portal. Now, if you don't believe me still, let's go deeper into the matrix here. And I'm going to show you something that I put together yesterday. Kodak Black to the Future and the Trump Gemini Timeline. Let me break this down for you. Kodak Black is a Gemini. As is Donald Trump. As is Kanye West who said when he met Trump he had dragon energy that he related to him. That's the Gemini spirit. Now... Kodak Black came out with this album. We decoded this yesterday. Called Back for Everything. And it's got a rewind button on it. What does the rewind represent? Well, this represents black regression programming. We talked a lot about this. The elevation of empty vessel role models to dumb down people of both colors. It's not just black people they do this with. They do it with white people too. But this is why this rewind button is on here. It's black regression programming. Then we go to the pause button. Now I did not discover this pause button. One of you in the comments section said, Casey, if Trump's a Gemini with Kodak Black and he's got the rewind and Trump has the fast forward, which you're going to see in a second here, then where's the pause button? And one of you said, it's the trade center footprint. The pause button. Now what could this possibly mean on a spiritual level? Well, under blind 11, under the lie, 
They brought all colors together, didn't they? Didn't they? And all of that was was a reset so that now they could fast forward. What do you mean, Casey? Well, this is the IBM building and Trump Tower, and they form fast forward buttons. Well, that's ridiculous. That's not a fast forward button. Well, yes, it is. This is why Trump talks about warp speed and 5G and 6G and beyond into the future. Now, what is the catalyst for this fast forward into the future back to the future what is the catalyst well that would be technology and the internet because it was at this point right after blind 11 that we had a surge of technology didn't we we had cell phones we had the internet all of that happened after this and now we are in fast forward motion under IBM and Trump Tower under Superman versus Batman. And now I'm going to confirm all this for you with this last part of the show. Because anyone with a pulse remembers that the Twin Towers were clad in aluminum. Here it is right here. Here's a vintage aluminum telephone booth. This one's from the 1970s. Here's the picture. They're aluminum. There's more pictures. Let me show you some more pictures. Because you got to understand this here. Ready? We're going to do a little Q&A here. These were aluminum. Just like the towers. Here's another one. In case you want to say, oh, they weren't aluminum. They're, that was just one you found that was aluminum. Nope. They're all aluminum. Here's the dimensions which confirm this is a 3 foot by 3 foot by 7 foot phone booth here. Aluminum once again. And now I'm going to let one of you tell us what is inside the aluminum telephone booth. I hope you're sitting down for this one. What is inside the aluminum telephone booth? It's going to take a minute for this to catch up. And now you know what 88 miles an hour means because each one of the towers had eight sides to it. Eight and eight, 88. It was a portal. It was about time travel. It always was. Copper. Yes. The phone booths were full of copper. And what does copper represent? After we just talked about this today, what was inside? What is inside of all money? What is inside of all trade? Money. Basically, the towers were aluminum phone booths full of copper money. World trade. And there you go right there. It proves it. Beyond the shadow of a doubt in my mind. Now, one of you asked me, let me give you guys a break here because this is a lot of information. Now, somebody asked me to watch a series called Seven Days. It's about time travel. And they asked me to watch a particular episode. In which a gremlin gets inside of the time machine. Lo and behold, there's a black pilot and a white pilot. The white pilot gets basically put on hold. And his Gemini brother named Don gets in the time machine. We'll cover that tomorrow. Super gremlin. So, something else is afoot here, isn't it? Let's go into the chat and see what you guys are up to. This is kind of a short show, but I'll put links to everything in the pinned comment, as I always do, if you want to research this stuff. But this is crazy. Yes, William says currency. Now, we can tie currency back to eddy currents. The eddy currents of the copper. That's the currency inside the phone booth. Unbelievable. 
So, Copper, CU, yes. All right. Uh oh. Well, it looked like we got kicked off almost. Ah, oh, man. So, Marina Bramovich knows what's going on. They're making a joke out of it. This is where the spirits come through the portal. They came through on 9 11. That's what happened. We saw them manifesting. We saw the gremlins manifesting out of the smoke. They are the, basically the demons released from the pit. This could have been the keys to the abyss being opened up. I don't know that for sure. But something happened. Something happened, didn't it? Some of you noticed that the word gremlin scrambled can mean uh, mingle and men girls. So mingling men into girls. Those three words, or those two words, are anagrams from the word gremlin. Let me type that out for you guys. So, gremlin anagram is mingle men girl. Mingle men into girls. So, Kremlin, Gremlin. Yeah, it's possible. Now, if we, we can go a level, we can chase this rabbit hole all the way down to the roots of what the copper is. Copper in the Bible is considered unclean. In fact, if you look in the temple, the tabernacle, it was the copper basin where they washed their hands. There was copper surrounding the Holy of Holies in preparation to go into the Holy of Holies. But once you got into the Holy of Holies, it was all gold. So you go from copper unclean into pure gold. So we, it tells us right there. Solomon's temple was made the same exact way. You went from bronze, copper, into the pure gold. So copper is the fake gold, isn't it? And we also know that copper was where the serpent was wrapped around the pole as well. So this copper is the element of the enemy, let's say, on a spiritual level. I don't know exactly, like, people talk about copper killing microbes, and I wouldn't disagree with you about that. We're talking on a spiritual level, all right? So, yeah, then there was Mengele. His name almost spells gremlin, doesn't it? Mingle. What was he doing? Working on twins. What? So, Mengele was a gremlin working on twins. His name would have to be changed to Mingle. Mingler. It's Mingler, actually, sorry. Grem. Gremlin. Yeah, that's it. It's Mingler. Not just Mingle, it's Mingler. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, because the gremlins reproduced out of control. They twinned each other, didn't they? Geminis. So. The pause button. What else is going on here? I'm just reading through your chat here, you guys. See if you guys have any other 
ideas or anything you come up with to make any more connections. So tomorrow we're going to be taking a look at this seven days uh, TV series that came out before the towers fell. This was in 2000. And they were talking about a huge tsunami that would take out Los Angeles. And there was a gremlin in the episode. And Dawn gets in the time machine. It's crazy. All right, you guys. Well, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Double helix, the towers, the stuff that holds the DNA together. Yes, it's always been about the DNA, isn't it? It's always been. Mixed the uh, iron mixed with watery clay. All right. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Start working on tomorrow's show. Love each and every one of you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care and be safe.